Body cavities are spaces or uh, compartments in an organism or in an animal. And within the body of the human being, we have various cavities. Okay. And in this picture here, I have uh, outlined some of the cavities that we have. For example, on the posterior, we have what we call cranial which houses our brain and of course the spinal cavity which will contain the spinal fluid and these two form the dorsal body cavity remember we talked about directional terminologies then on the anterior we have this dark bluish uh, the thoracic cavity where we have the lungs we have pericardial cavity where we have the heart we have the diaphragm that separates the upper part and the lower abdominal cavity. This is now the abdominal cavity and this is the pelvic cavity. Okay. Now, abdominal cavity and pelvic cavity are referred to as abdominal pelvic cavity. Now, together with thoracic cavity, pericardial cavity and diaphragm, it forms the ventral body cavity. Okay, now within the pericardial cavity, we also have now the heart, and we have what we call the visceral pericardium, the parietal pericardium, which is the outer layer of the uh, pericardial cavity, and that is now what houses the heart. So this, this other picture here is just a frontal view of the same, where we look at the cranial cavity, spinal cord, the pleural cavity or the thoracic cavity, diaphragm, abdominal cavity, and the pelvic cavity. So I will look at them in terms of the two. We said ventral body cavity and dorsal body cavity. So we start with the ventral body cavity. And the ventral is also called coelom. You realize that in, in human anatomy, there is a lot of terminologies that will describe the same thing. So it is important for you to be keen, even when you are reading. So the ventral body cavity provides protection and allows organ movement, lining, preventing friction. And it is separated into two. Uh, we said the diaphragm separates the thoracic cavity and the abdominal pelvic cavity. And for the thoracic cavity, it's surrounded by the chest wall and the diaphragm and can be subdivided into the right pleural cavity surrounding the right lung. Mediastinum contains the trachea, the esophagus, and the major vessels that are getting into the heart and out of the heart. Then we have left pleural cavity that surrounds the left lung. Then this mediastinum will also now contain the pericardial cavity that directly surrounds the heart. Then abdominal pelvic cavity contains the peritoneal cavity that includes abdominal cavity containing the digestive glands and organs. And it also concludes the pelvic cavity that will contain the urinary bladder, reproductive organs, and the last portion of the digestive containing also the rectum and the anus. Then in the abdominal uh, cavity, we have what we call quadrants uh, or dividing the abdomen into four quadrants. And these are the quadrants. You can see there is this pink, uh, pinkish line that is dividing our abdomen into quadrants. We have the first quadrant here is the right upper quadrant then below it is the right lower quadrant okay then we have the left upper quadrant and the left lower quadrant these quadrants are important for being able to locate uh, several organs within the body because human anatomy simply is describing where is what organ 
So quadrants are important for us being able to define and locate various organs within the human body. So then we have also what we call regions, okay, uh, which is a more elaborate uh, than just the right upper quadrant, the left ETC. So we have nine of them. We have the right hypochondriac, hypochondriac region. We have the epigastric region. Then we have the left hypochondriac region. Then we have the lumbar region, which is now right lumbar region, the umbilical region, here you have the umbilical, then the left lumbar region. Then uh, below here we have the right iliac, or what we call the inguinal region. Then we have hypogastric region that will compose of also the, the, small, the intestines. Then we have now the inguinal region that is on the left, or left iliac region. So usually you can see that each of those uh, nine regions, we have the organs. For example, in this right hypochondriac region, we have the gall, uh, bladder, we have the liver, and so on. You can see for the right lumbar, we have the ascending colon of the large intestines. And then we have in this uh, left inguino, right inguino, we have the cecum uh, and we have the appendix and then in the middle here we have the stomach in the umbilical region here we have the small intestine and here we have the urinary bladder then on the left hypo hypochondriac region we have the diaphragm the spleen and of uh, we also have in the left lumbar region we have uh, the descending colon uh, of the large intestine and at the left iliac or inguinal region we have the initial part of the sigmoid colon. So these quadrants and regions as we have said they are important for helping us locate the different organs that are within the body. Then that was ventral. Now what about dorsal? Dorsal is composed of cranial cavity that houses the brain and uh, vertebral or the spinal cavity that runs through the vert vertebral column and it will enclose the spinal cord. So other cavities that we have, especially now on the skull, are these five that I have labeled in blue on our picture here. So the first one is the oral cavity. Number one is the oral cavity. Then number two, we have the nasal cavity. Then number three, we have the orbital cavity where we have the eyes. Number four, we have the middle ear cavity. Remember cavities are spaces. Then we have number five. In between our vertebral bones, we have the synovial cavity that is the joint between the neck vertebrae, okay? So these are other body cavities that we find in our uh, skull.